taped live in front of a studio audience inside the Commoner, located inside Hotel Monaco. It's OG Cooking, a look at food, culture, and people with your host, Olga George. Hi, welcome to OG Cooking. I'm your host, Olga George. Today joining us is Ron Alvarado. He is the owner and founder of Novice Group LLC. It's a Pittsburgh company that does staffing and recruitment for local companies. Welcome, Ron. Thank Hi. You, thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, so, um, as you mentioned, I'm New Rican. New Rican. Yep. So, um, but really Puerto Rican. I was grew I grew up in the culture, with the language, with the music, and with the food. Mm -hmm. um, growing up in New York City, my grandfather actually lived uh, in our neighborhood for I think 30 years. And okay. Didn't speak English. Wow. Yeah. So that's the neighborhood. So, right. Um, uh, so the. Uh, Cultural influence was significant. We spoke Spanish at home. Mm -hmm. We ate Spanish food, and we're going to talk about Puerto Rican food, especially in particular. Right. Um, and you know, we had the music, so the culture was very, very big for us growing up. And I've carried on that tradition. So you moved from New York to Florida. I moved from New York to Orlando, and okay. in Orlando, there were more Puerto Ricans than in Puerto Rico. <laughs> in fact, in New York, there really are more Puerto Ricans in New York now. I think 3.6 million. Mm -hmm. Than in Puerto Rico, okay. so uh, but Orlando was a highly concentration, uh, a high, a large concentration of Puerto Ricans. Mm. Yeah. Now, New York, Florida, right. particularly Orlando, now Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, yeah. I, <coughs> I got here in 1994, so it's a much different area today. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I tell people all the time. You know, first thing that you look for when I, I came here is I wanted to dance salsa. Yes. And fortunately we had a place uh, in the strip district uh, that I can't remember the club, but they did salsa Thursdays. Mm -hmm. And then my platanos. And I found a platano, a place to buy platanos was a, a store, a Vietnamese store in the strip district. So you call it platanos. Platanos. And other islanders call it plantains. Mm -hmm. But it's the same, the same thing, yeah, yes? Yeah, plantains, platanos, okay. but we call them platanos. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, how hard was it moving from New York and Florida and then coming to Pittsburgh, finding all the different foods that make uh, up the different dishes? That's a good point. Uh, so when I first got here, it was very diff difficult. In fact, I would drive to New York, pack up. Oh my goodness. And a lot of my friends still do that. Uh, but now, fortunately, you go to you know, Walmart, I mean, mm. I'm sorry, so Chinese Eagle or Walmart, mm -hmm. you'll find uh, in the Hispanic sessions, you'll find a, a good selection of Goya products primarily. But do you go to the strip district? Because that's one of the places I really love you know, to I, shop. I, it depends. I don't anymore because I can find platanos. Uh, in, yeah. At the regular grocery right, stores. Right, so there's no reason for me. Before I had to come to the strip district. Now uh -huh. I can go to Giant Eagle. I have a Walmart moon. So right. I can find my platanos there. I can find just about everything I need uh, now in the local stores where before you couldn't. That no, Giant Eagle wasn't carrying a Goya section. So. Now, now I think the, the supermarkets are doing a good job of stocking product. Because for the most part, now they've realized that people want to kind of experiment. Even if they're not Hispanic, they want to they they try wanna the food. experiment, foods. but yeah. you also have an explosive growth in the Latino community. Oh, ah, okay. So when I got here, I mean, there may be were less than 10,000 Hispanics. Mm -hmm. Now, 45, 50,000 is the fastest growing segment of the local population. Okay. So. You know, I think it's cross-cultural. People want to come and explore the foods, but also you have just local folks buying. Well, one of the things that I always find interesting, because I'm originally from the Virgin Islands, my parents are from Antigua, mm -hmm. but one of the things that I found very interesting throughout the Caribbean is the connection of food oh, for sure. us, you know. As, now, Puerto Rico is not too far from the Virgin Islands. No. We actually celebrate a day called yeah. VI, Puerto Rico Friendship Day. Absolutely. Um, and one of the things that we, we started talking about food is there is a dish that we call, well, island is called seasoning, right. but you guys call it. We call it, it sofrito. 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 I think we have a little, I made a little sample. Let's, let's pull that up over here for a quick second. Now, ooh, yes, the sofrito. Mm. Now you Can see you this, that? ooh. This is so, the aroma is so delicious. And you want to suck, well, actually, sometimes I do suck this down <laughs> straight up after I make it. But for me, it's green tomatoes, a little bit of chili, 
because especially if I'm serving it to everybody else, mm -hmm. I don't want it to be too gotcha. hot. Um, some, uh, what is parsley? Just a little bit of parsley, mm -hmm. some basil, mm -hmm. onion, mm -hmm. garlic, salt, pepper, and my little secret, the Goya. Uh, Goya Sasson? Sasson. Oh, Sasson yeah. Goya. Yeah, okay, Sasson. look, you, you <laughs> cannot make this without Sasson Goya. Yeah. The salt and pepper, cool, but without the Sasson Goya, it's just sauce. Now this, for me, we put it in rice, we make it with our beans. We could even season some of our meats. Now, what do you guys do so, with um, this? With um, our sofrito, it's a little mm -hmm. different. Uh, in fact, um, it's the center mm -hmm. of uh, Puerto Rican cuisine, the center ah. of the universe Okay. of Puerto Rican cuisine. You have to have the sofrito. And mm -hmm. we, so for us, it's uh, green peppers, onion, cilantro, garlic. Okay. I'm missing something. Um, and uh, so we, that's the basis for our, uh, for my beans, mm -hmm. for my, my stews, for my chicken dishes. Um, it is the critical component. So it's almost like in your... Yeah, yeah, for, you for us with the seasoning. Yes. Because, so oh my goodness, is, come on. You, there's, it's, a lot of people just use seasonings yeah. of, you know, either fresh or dried. Right. But for us, that, that yeah. blend, yeah. oh my we goodness. Can't, we can't, I mean, for us, I'm not going to make a dish without sofrito. Sofrito, It's yeah. not going to work. See, and yeah. for me. See, and what I do, in fact, I make a lot of it, uh -huh. and then I put it in an ice cube container, yes. freeze it, yes. and then I take my cubes out. Yes. So if I'm making beans, I'll put one cube. Uh -huh. If I'm making a pollo guisado, which is a chicken uh, fricasse, okay. I'm going to put two in, uh -huh. et cetera. Now, we're going to move on to the, the rice and beans. Okay. Now, if you're an islander, trust me, rice and beans is the stable <laughs> of Arroz your, con habichuela. Arroz con habichuela. your life. You cannot live in the islands without rice yeah, and beans. So, so, so if you're yeah. a housewife in Puerto Rico. Hey, housewife. What, what a, house, no, 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 no. House no, husband. Stay with me. Uh, come on. All right, if I'm a house husband in you Puerto Rico in Puerto and my Rico. wife comes home and yeah. I don't have my arroz con habichuela, <laughs> <laughs> there's there's going to be problems that night. But it's a st I mean, we're going to eat it with, I mean, arroz con habichuelas, it's, it's, on, it's part of every single dinner. Oh, yeah. Now, this, this is the kidney beans. A lot of, you know, it's right here in the United States. It's dry. It's not canned. Because for me, the canned stuff is too salty. And it's, 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 it's sometimes it's going to be too mush, mushy. Now, you get the dry ones anywhere in any supermarket. Right. You soak it overnight. That's the trick to, to get them nice and soft and pileable. You soak it overnight mm -hmm. and you drain it off and then you put it in the pot. You start cooking that first before you put in your rice. Otherwise, you'll have very hard beans yes. and what my father used to call shatter grain rice that you can oh, kill pigeons tough, because yeah. it's so tough, yeah. you know? So you have to be very careful with the rice. Yeah. Um, uh, I use a specific port, uh, uh, clico. Um, and it and comes out good every time I make it okay. because if I'm using other kinds of rice, mm -hmm. it doesn't come out good. It's either watery, aguao, pegao, you know, it's too mushy. Uh, it, so it, it tastes like porridge sometimes. Oh, no, you can't have that. Yeah. It's got to be flaky. It, yes, yes. So you want your rice to be flaky. And so the other thing is we can make, so we're always going to have rice and beans. Oh, so yeah. Sometimes they're together. Uh-huh. Right? So we, and we have every kind of bean, red, pink. Green, yeah. pigeon garbanzos, peas. pigeon peas, ah, gandules, yeah. yes. uh, and we even do, so we'll have arroz con maíz, rice with corn, Yes. arroz con salchicha, salchicha. rice with sausage, uh -huh. where uh, in Puerto Rico they'll use vellana sausages, what I use, uh, I do, it's more healthy, it's healthier, the Hebrew national hot dogs. Hot dogs, Closer, uh -huh. yeah. the sausages. So there's always going to be your rice and beans, so it could be together. Mm -hmm. Or it could be on the, side, on the side, yeah. And my beans on the side. Depends right. on what's coming with it. Well, also when we do the 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 beans on the side compared to in the rice, yes. the seasoning has to be different because right. the beans has to be it's able got, to yeah, stand got, on yeah, its exactly. own. Exactly. Because you know all the other dishes might right. take over. Yep. So if the beans is not being able to stand on its yeah. own, it's like ugh. You want so. it to be uh, so. You want it. I mean, the, you're absolutely right. The thickness is important. Uh huh. Of the, you don't want it too watery too soupy, 
the thickness, but the taste. That flavor's got to be there. You have to put some, yeah. some so garlic, some well, onion, yeah, you put a little something I usually, I, I'll usually yeah. throw a piece of uh, uh, onion in. I'll usually, mm. if I have a, a piece of garlic left over, I'll throw a piece of garlic in. Mm -hmm. I might throw a uh, couple of pieces of cilantro. I might throw a tomato, uh, um, a potato. Potato. Or calabaza, ah, which is pumpkin, a little yeah, piece of, just yeah. to thicken to it, it up. Give it a little yeah, something yeah. more. A little kick. And, and it also depends on what type of beans. Right now we have the kidney beans, right. but if you're using the pigeon peas or the black totally beans, different. it's a totally different seasoning right, that yeah. you have to be aware yeah, of. Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Because this, obviously this is a bigger bean. When you're working with the smaller peas, you have to be very careful because you don't want to take away from the taste of the bean. Of course. And you can do that with the smaller bean. Right. Um, and the sauce is going to be different just based on the color of the bean. So, um, but no, rice and beans. Um, Eat all the time, we, we every, have, every, just yeah, about every yeah. meal. And there's another Res thing that we do. What? I don't know if you guys do it. What we do? The platanos? Plat oh, <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up. You're gonna get to the platanos. Okay. Let's, let's talk about the rice because one okay. of the things that a lot of people don't understand with rice is that you have to start off with a little bit of water and then add in water because I think what happens is that they put too much water to yeah. begin with and then it comes soupy. The, uh, the, the, and that's so getting rice right is not an art that I've perfected. Using my new rice, I got it, I got it down. Oh. Um, so my mother always said, once you get your rice, especially if, so I'm, this is not just rice, uh -huh. typically I'm, I'm doing a mix. Yes. With the I could also the make beer. rice with chicken. I yes. Uh huh. So once I get my rice in and it's cooked well, mm -hmm. I got, and I've stirred it and I got my seasoning all in there and I can see the color, mm -hmm. then I'm going to put my water in and I'm going to work my water. And it's basically about, you know, quarter to half inch. Yeah. On top, uh -huh. let it boil, cover it, put it down to simmer, and then, you know, wait for it to cook. Well, see, my thing is I've always started off with a little bit of water right. first, okay. get that the rice going, and as I'm stirring it up and looking at it, I add the water as necessary, but oh. it's never cold water, it's always warm Got water. Okay. Because with the cold water, adding it to the yeah. pot, it drops and down so the how, heat. So when, when do you stop? How do you know to stop adding water? Uh, because I'm, I'm lifting it up, and as I see it plump up, you and know, it's cooked. Even when it's cooking? Even when it's own? cooking, I'm still stirring it. I don't leave it alone. I keep stirring it. You don't cover it? I do cover it, but you know you still have to come back and so look at it. So you're stirring and then adding add, water. And adding water, taking to look to see what degree okay. it is. I'll have to so, try that. Yeah, because yeah. I've always worked the opposite. Opposite way. way, and then that method I do if it's just the rice by itself. Now, if I'm adding meat or the beans or anything, then you add a little, you put in more water because you have to compensate for the chicken, right. the beef, the beans, and then you're looking at that as well. So. What I'm going to do now, we're going to talk about his plantones and a dish that is so uniquely Puerto Rican that is easy to make, so delicious that you do not want to miss it. <laughs> Welcome back to OG Cooking. You're probably wondering, hey, so what is this? Okay. So, Ron, what is this? Um, I'll, well, hold, I'll hold that. Yeah, yeah. so basically, <clears throat> so it's a tostonera. Tostones are, so we have maduro. Yeah. Maduros are platanos maduro. Maduro means ripe. Right. So when this ripens, it gets yellow and then black. And so this, when it's cut open and sliced, it's almost like a banana, uh -huh. but it's not a banana. It's a uh, you fry it. Yep. So maduro is ripe. This is green. So this this is um, tostones. Yes. Right. So it's gonna. These are the starches. So this is more like a French fry. Uh huh. So you slice this. Now this is a different tool here because this has got um, an indentation here that you could actually basically make a mold in right. the toston and fill it. The others come, uh, I have one that does not have this, and basically what you do is you put the, the stone oh, in and you, you slide it, it down, yeah. yeah. Because what happens is, this is a very, so it's not ripe, it's mm -hmm. very hard. When you start frying this, if you don't smash it, yeah. you're gonna, it's not gonna, yeah, it's, no, yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna be uncooked. So you have to smash it at some point. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you, f you slice it, you begin to fry it, yeah. 
you pull it out, mash it, and replace re re it into, it. The, uh, into the frying pan. Now, pot. there is a dish that we use with the green, we call it green plantains. Yes. Um, that you actually, when you put the flatten the, the plantains inside, yes. You put actually, what is that called? Yeah, so in Puerto Rico, we call that uh, mofongo. Mofongo. Yeah, it's ah. huge. So, it's a, it's, so if you think about Puerto Rican traditional dishes, mm -hmm. typical mofongo, pasteles, arroz con gandules. So what that is, is you're going to take, maybe I'll use that kind, because this is going to be too green. Maybe oh, this, this one is, looks it's a little It's a little ripe. bit yellow. Yeah. Yep, yep. So okay. I'm going to use this. I'm going to boil it. Okay. And then I'm going to mash it. But when you boil it, it can't be too soft. Right. You want to mash it and create your base around the inside. Mm. You take it out, and then you fill it with whatever, chicken, whatever, shrimp, chicken is straight. meat, whatever kind of meat. Yep, mm -hmm. so that's called mofongo. They fill it with anything. I'm not a big fan of mofongo. Why not? Nah, it's never, no, never, never got But I love my platano. So in <laughs> other words, if you go to a Puerto Rican household, mm -hmm. you're going to have rice and beans. We talked about that. Yes. Your platanos are going to be there. Okay. Yeah. So for me, if there's no platanos, it's not a traditional dish. Ah. It's just that added starch. My wife likes the green. The My daughter likes the tostones. Yes. I, lo I love the maduros. So okay. for me, the darker, the better. Because when it's really, really dark, we call it the ripened oh, plantain. Yeah. That's the one that you can slice you basically and throw put it in, in and the fry. Take now, it right out. Now, the thing is, there are some cultures that have one girlfriend, she actually, it's, she likes that ripe, the, the darkened plantain. She fries it, but then she puts um, tomato sauce, green peppers, green um, some onions, a little bit of garlic, and kind of saute the plantains with it. Have you ever tasted anything I've like not, that? I've not, but I, you know, so you go to some of the Brazilian places like um, the Fugo de Chao. Yeah. Those, they'll serve platanos that are the sweet plantains that are made uh, baked, I believe. Yes. So it's different. Um, one of the things that I do, one of my special dishes, mm -hmm. It's not a complicated dish, but it's a time-consuming dish. It's called pastelon okay. de platano. Ah. So think about a lasagna. Oh, Think okay. about lasagna. Yes. And instead of pasta, you have sweet platanos. Ooh. Ooh. That sounds good. Unbelievable. Now, so to make that, you flatten out. Yeah, so basically to make that dish, yeah. first of all, you're going to have to find, you can't find ripe platanos here in and Pittsburgh. You can't, and you can't find too green. Right. So. Yeah. It's all a timing thing. Yes. You gotta buy a lot of platanos uh -huh. to make that dish. So you'll have to have like a dozen platanos and the darker the better. You want it that green. I want it I want it dark. I want okay. it ripe. Oh you want it ripe. Yes, yes, yes. okay. I want it ripe, but yes. not too ripe. I don't need it too soft. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna slice it thin. Okay. And then so I'm gonna do egg on the bottom. Uh-huh. I'm gonna do a layer of sliced thin fried platanos. Oh, you fry them first? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to do uh, like a picadillo. I don't know if you've had picadillo. It's a Cuban dish. It's like uh, uh, ground beef. Okay. Ground beef, uh, tomato sauce, mm -hmm. uh, capers, olives, Ooh. onions. So you, good. yeah, so that's your, that's, that's, that's your, your, meat. your meat. So I'll do my platanos, my, the meats. my meat, uh -huh. uh, layer, uh, a, a little bit of ricotta, and then ah. the, repeat again. Platanos, Meat, uh, layer of ricotta, another and platanos, and then egg on top, and bake and it. And then bake it. So why why use ricotta? That's my mother taught me. Ah, okay. Uh, I so don't know. <laughs> I didn't ask my mother. <laughs> it tastes good. It tastes good. Yeah. So so you don't mash it, you don't flatten it out or anything no, like that. No, just let it bake, and it's, it comes out. You know, you want to make sure you really. Um, uh, do you butter the butter dish your before? Side, yeah. oh, you, so, so you butter. You want to make sure that you, you can, it's going to come now, out. Now, when you say put the eggs, so you, you scramble up a couple of eggs and put them in the bottom, and, bottom yeah. Yeah. and then you start, then start with your plantain and then I'm make the put layers. It. And my mother says, again, my mother said, God rest her soul, she said that they don't hold it. The, the, the it's like eggs, a binding. The egg's going to bind. Because you, I didn't hear anything about milk. Because usually no some people put milk with their lasagna. No milk. You're saying no milk. No milk. No, because this is not going to be a traditional lasagna. You think it's going to be very mushy yeah very soft mm -hmm. and this is going to be it's more hard, hard. okay yeah, so i want to serve it when i'm serving it uh, be able to cut and, and you have can that figure, dimension you can serve. i had a party that had 30 people and, and it went uh i had a tray mm -hmm. one tray and um 
you know, a small piece will go a long a way. A long way. Yeah, because, yeah, you, because you have all those layers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's delicious. Now, you were telling me um, another dish that you use with the plantains, and I'm not, not sure if it's the ripe or the not so ripe ones, that you use this and kind of smash oh, in. Oh, so this what is a was trick. That was called? So this is a trick I got. So Ricky Clemente is Roberto Clemente's youngest son. Yes. His wife, he's a good friend of mine. His wife, Lorna, is one of the best Puerto Rican cooks. Yeah, she, she's like that with my mom. She's a, she's a, she's a great, great cook. Uh -huh. And uh, we were cooking uh, at her house or mine, I forget. And she said, no, this is what you do with the platanos. Okay. So remember, you have to smash them. You got to smash those platanos. Otherwise, they're not okay, going to cook, right? Right. And you can use a device like this. Mm -hmm. Again, typically the device doesn't have this right. to smash it. But what we do, what I used to do before she told me actually, I said take two little plates, uh -huh, and put and them on two little, yeah. Uh -huh, okay. But what she says is you take this, this is the pilon, the multi-functional Puerto Rican device. <laughs> that that looks like a I could drink, <laughs> I could do my, I could do my sofrito, do sofrito I could drink, I have my drinks in here, have a beer. <laughs> But anyway, what you do is, um, if I'm frying my platanos, I have yeah. my frying pan. Okay. I have my platanos working here. Mm -hmm. I'll take this, and in the bottom, I'm going to put it in hot oil. So you get some oil in the bottom. And I'm going to put it on parchment paper or, or wax paper. Uh-huh. Yep. So I'm going to get my oil. And then as I'm doing that, I'm also oiling and greasing the bottom. Okay. Right? So right. I'm going to take my platano, put it on here, smash it. Uh-huh. Put it back in. Oh. So it's a little easier. Then this then thing. This, yeah, yeah, smashing it all. And I'm time. probably gonna be using this in in my dish anyway, okay. right? So this mm. is this is part of my my, my this is my setup. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to go look for that thing. But this is, and it works well. I mean, it's a much much easier, easier. Yep. than, than yeah. using the, the smashes. Okay. And so you again, you have your frying pan here. You got your paper here. You come in this way. It works really, it works really well. Well, after every meal, of course, ends with tea. Or coffee. Oh, well, we don't mm -hmm. have tea in Puerto well, Rico. <laughs> okay. You see the little, you know, we don't do tea in Puerto Rico. We do tea in where I'm from, St. Croix and Antigua, because my parents are a little British, because, you know, Antigua was once owned by the British. Puerto Rico, however, they have fantastic coffee. So smell this. Oh. Smell this. <laughs> well, the whole... I think restaurants actually in our section smell yeah. with that coffee. And this coffee. is a small is bag. Yes. And this, this is came from, uh, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to my, my dear friend, and his name is uh, Kobe, Ernesto Kobe Davila. And he's from Hayuya, Puerto Rico. Oh, Hayuya. Okay. Hayuya is one of the highest peaks on the island, and it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in the world. Okay. Uh, and um, the uh, coffee, this coffee comes it's from a hacienda, uh, mm -hmm. a coffee farm right next to his house. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. So it's great coffee. And, and, and typically, you're going to drink coffee three times a day. OK. You're going to wake up to coffee. Mm -hmm. And as Gobi tells me, and I don't know if, if, if you're a coffee fan, think about this. And I don't know if it's because Gobi hypnotized me. <laughs> but every day at about 3 o'clock, I start jonesing oh. for my coffee. OK. Seriously, I, I need that pickup. And Colby told me that he, oh, it's time for my mi café de la tres, <laughs> my coffee yeah, for three o'clock. Oh but, uh, but this is interesting. So, uh. and I got you some of this coffee. Yeah, right? I have some of those okay. coffee. So uh, what I did with the coffee is I made coffee cake. Oh. But I know you like to so drink it. And there's so, a, there's so a this is the secret. Okay. What? This is called the magic sock. Oh. That's the magic sock. It's a little wind catcher. So again, this came from Colby. When I okay. went to Colby's house for the first time, he yes. used this. I came home. Everything I threw out everything my uh, automatic espresso maker, my Nutella, everything, uh, everything, all the espresso, machines dumped, and everything. all the plastic, everything went away. So, oh when I make my coffee, ah. here's how it's as easy, but this is how you have to do it. Okay, if you're gonna drink this coffee, mm -hmm. if I anyone out there, if I ever bring you some coffee from Puerto Rico and you do it any way other than this, so I'm the, never gonna bring you so some coffee again. So, the way I've been doing it using my coffee machine, that no, no, oh, oh no, okay. Oh. Well, you have to give me a socks yeah. then. Go ahead. Yeah, so me, this, is, this, is the ma this is called a colador. Mm. Colador. Colador, right? Yeah. Simple. Okay. And my mother used to d use this when we were kids. Um, and then I saw Kobe do it in Hayuya. And I'm like, I'm never going to make this coffee again without the sock. Okay. What I call the magic sock. So you boil your water. So I boil 
one cup of water to one tablespoon of coffee. Mm -hmm. So I typically do one and a half cups of water, okay. one and a half tablespoons of coffee. I boil my coffee first. Can you hold this for me? Oh yeah. I boil my coffee first, mm -hmm. and then I put my coffee in when it starts boiling. So and what's going to happen? It's going to it's going to come that up. That yep. So you want to take it off and you want to stir it. Yeah. Take it off the heat and then put it back down on the uh, pot and okay. cook your coffee. Ah. Yeah, and I do that maybe for, uh, I'm going to stir a little bit. Okay. I want it warm, so I'm going to do a minute, two minutes. Right. The other thing about this process, quick. You boil your, your water, you put your coffee in, and two minutes, three minutes later, you have your coffee. Gosh. So now, it's already, it's boiled. It's boiled. You take it. I have a large, in fact, I have a cup that I bought from Hayuya, Puerto ah. Rico. It's, okay. It's deep. So I put this in there. Pour everything in there. And then and let, let, it dra let it drain right smell, out. Smell, and then you just smell and watch. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and then it'll just drip. <laughs> Seriously. It'll just drip. And then um, you finish with this. Uh -huh. And then you take that coffee. And it's the best coffee oh. ever. And then I call Kobe. Now, <laughs> how long? You have the water boiling. How long would you boil the, the grains? Again, for? so my, once the water is boiling, mm. I'm going to boil that for a minute, a minute and a half, or two minutes. So. No more than two minutes? Or I can do no three. It's up three? to your I like hot coffee, so okay. I might do three minutes. Right. It depends on how badly I want the coffee. <laughs> I'm serious. If I need a shot of coffee, then that one minute. That, that, that's that's it. It. But do you find that when you boil in the coffee, how long you boil it, it changes the strength of the coffee? No. Because some people like really, really strong coffee. No. 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 Mm. And again, so you're taking that and then you're pouring it. Now, so if you're using this method, yeah. you can balance it. So if you don't like, I like strong coffee. If yes. you don't like strong coffee, do a cup, a cup and a half of water to one tablespoon. Ah, I do one and a half tablespoon. Okay, but to one cup. This is, but this is the trick. That's a sick, that's a secret. This is the trick, yep. Okay. You want to pull that in and this is for you, dear. <laughs> Great, I'm going to have to try it, but I, 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 can I have the coffee too? You can have the coffee too. All right. Because I did use all the coffee that she did bring back from Puerto Rico. I, <laughs> I, I got to make my coffee, coffee right? Yeah, you have to make the coffee I have run. another one. Yeah. In fact, I'm going out there. I'm bringing 50 pounds of coffee. Oh, my goodness. Now, think, think about that. Uh, I know I'm going to get stopped oh. because my cousin is a criminal attorney. Okay. And he, my cousin Victor, he's a criminal attorney. He said, Ron, <laughs> you take 50, 50 pounds of coffee? That's what the drug smugglers take. Oh, no. So you're gonna get stopped. Oh so I'm my gonna give goodness. myself. I'm gonna give myself enough time. You got enough time <laughs> because they're gonna check you. They're gonna, they're gonna do. They're gonna <laughs> search you down for sure. You know you won't be able to. But get I talk back. to the guys. Oh you know, I say, goodness. listen. You know, I'm. I, I, I give my story. I let mm -hmm. them know how much I love Puerto Rican coffee. Yes. And I think they, they get it. You know, my my, my brothers because and sisters you, who are law enforcement. Because you, you can't get that stateside. Nowhere. This coffee. Yes. Especially going up there and buying it. Uh huh. I mean. I can come back. I, I can't remember the price, but it is ridiculously inexpensive, and it's the best coffee I've had. In fact, we had a party up at Kobe's house mm -hmm. in Hayuya. We had a bunch of people from here. Okay. So some of the work that we were doing in Puerto oh, Rico. Oh, Puerto Rico after the, the, the with hurricane. With, yeah, in yes. fact, it was a brother's brother sponsored luncheon in mm -hmm. Hayuya. Uh, in Hayuya, the way I got up to Hayuya, it's uh, Hayuya is was significantly devastated by the hurricane yes it is it takes an hour and a half and it's a treacherous trip on a good day okay mm -hmm. I was just over there uh -huh. it's an hour and a half up 10 miles an hour oh my goodness 10 miles an hour so imagine after a hurricane they were completely cut off yeah and so in these remote areas they have what's called CDT said that it's a community diagnostic and treatment center mm -hmm. it's a small clinic you figure Hayuya uh, from the bottom of Hayuya, the base of Hayuya is about 20 minutes to the hospital. Mm -hmm. But 20 minutes plus an hour and a half. Oh my goodness. So you can't get this. Get so they it. have these community based hospitals. Obviously, they were just devastated by the earth, by, by, the, the by the hurricanes, yes. Through the generosity of our beautiful friends and neighbors here in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. uh, and supporters of brother, bro Brother's Brother, we put a uh, solar panel roof on the emergency nice. room there. Yeah. So it was the so first the first CDT uh, emergency room with solar power on that island is in Hayuya and we put it there. All right. Well, thank you, Ron, for, for you. joining me today because this is fantastic. You. you know I'm going to have you back because we need to talk about Coquito. Coquito's coming so, up. Because Coquito is one of the things that we do 
during the Christmas holiday seasons. And, you know, that's one of the things that we need to talk about. I'd love to but come back. You come back, and I think we will actually have to go through the process of actually showing I'd you love how to, to do, do it. That, yeah. All right? Yeah, I'd love to well, do that. Thank you, Ron Alvarado, for, for showing us and talking to us about the food. And I appreciate him. We're going to have him back another time. And thank you for watching OG Cooking. See you next time.